Hey, it's Jason here from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Well, if you're a beginner looking to buy a rose, there's an information resource you should know about. All of the experts use it, I use it, uh, and the whole rose community knows about it, but if you're a beginner, you might not yet, and that would be a shame, because in buying a new rose, it's where you should go. It's called Help Me Find Roses, completely user contributed. Um, you don't have to pay to use it, and uh, it is like the Wikipedia of roses. It has all the images you need, all of the data you need on the roses you might want to purchase. Now I'm going to take you there in just a second and show you how to navigate the site. Um, it's a great site. The only uh, quibble I would have with it is not really mobile friendly. So I'd suggest if you're looking to use it, get your list of roses ready and then go to a desktop or a laptop or uh, some other place where you have a full screen to play with because it's not really great on your cell phone. So before you do that though, I'm going to ask you to consider a couple of things and uh, uh, take a little list here of the qualities of a rose that you're looking to get. So, you know, you might want to know before you get on the site and start searching around what the color of the rose that you're looking for, the color of the bloom, if that's important to you. You might want to know the fragrance. You might want to know the size of the bloom that you're looking for and the bloom form, the form of the rose, and by that I mean, uh, sorry, the habit of the rose. So whether it's a climber, whether it's a shrub, uh, the, the ultimate height of the rose that you're looking for, and then any other special considerations for your site. Like if you're in a cold winter climate, uh, you might want to consider what your climate zone you're looking for, or if you're looking for something that will tolerate shade or uh, sandy soil or that kind of thing. So get that list ready before you go. And then I'm going to encourage you to do one more thing. And uh, I make a mistake when I'm shopping for roses because I have a secret wish list of roses that I've read in books and I've looked around and I'm, I'm looking for those roses. And so for me, looking for roses, I frustrate myself because I know about all these roses I want to get, um, but they're not available from the suppliers that I can order from. Particularly me in Canada, I'm a little restricted as to where I can buy. So what I would suggest you do before, again, you go to the site, uh, start finding a wish list of roses that might not be obtainable in your area, is find yourself a vendor or a supplier that you're interested in buying from. Get their list of roses, make sort of a short list of ones you're kind of interested in, and then you can go to Help Me Find and do the research that it will take to figure out if those roses are right for you. So without further ado, next scene here, I'll take you through how to navigate the Help Me Find Roses site. Okay, here we are on the Help Me Find website. <clears throat> and to start, I just wanted to say, uh, I have no affiliation with this website. I'm not trying to sell you anything. If you wanted to go and click the donate button or become a member, that'd be fine with me. Uh, but I don't really have a dog in this fight. It's just a really great information resource. So <clears throat> first I should show you how to get there. Up at the top here, you can see in the address bar that it's uh, Help Me Find dot com slash roses or if you get there like most people do you just search through google help me find all one word roses and that should be your first site that comes up so the way you use the site i mean various resources on here um, but the way i normally do it is go over here to plants and once i have my list of plants so let's assume i've done what i previously recommended and put together a list from my favorite supplier of a plant that I wanted to look up. And just to extend the example, let's say I was looking for climbers. So I found on my favorite supplier's website a plant called Altissimo, and I want to see what that looks like and what it does. So, okay, Altissimo and climbing Altissimo. Oftentimes what you'll find here is that they have different names for the same roses kind of listed together and these two listings here are two different names for the same rose this one here is a different one and you can tell that the data is the same here 109 favorite roses excellent minus rating and so on it's the same for this one here so it actually doesn't matter which one you click here and once you do then it comes up with this handy page here which is really going to give you the information exactly what we talked about. It's going to have the color of the rose down here. It talks about it's red, has a mild clove fragrance, seven petals on average, 
Average diameter, five inches. So that's a wide, wide rose. Large, single. Born mostly solitary, cluster flowered in small clusters. Cup to flat form blooms. And blooms and flushes throughout the season. So that means you got that repeat. What else? It's a climber. So it's a tall climbing rose with a height of 7 to 15 feet, a width on average of 8 feet. And other things you might want to know about it is that it's hardy to about zone 5B. It can be grown as a shrub if you cut it down every year. It's shade tolerant and it has uh, some disease uh, resistance there. So that is fantastic. And if you want to know more about the rose even, and we'll dig deep into this one here, you can see that one there shows its parentage. And my favorite part of the site, these tabs across the top here, where they talk about comments from other members, but photos is what I like to do. Get a good idea of what it might look like in my garden, including comments from the people who contributed the photos. So you can see there's a lot of information to dig into here. But let's search up another rose. So let's say I'm looking at Altissimo. That was one of my considerations for a climber. And I also maybe will look at Polka. And again, assuming that's a plant that was available from my favorite supplier, I'm going to go right here to Polka. Wow, that's a neat looking rose. So what can I find out about this one here? Well, it obviously has a lot more petals. And here it talks about that. It's a very, very large, double, 17 to 25 on average, petals, old fashioned bloom form. It's climbing to a height here about 12 feet. So it's not quite as tall as the previous one. And skipping over to photos, once again, you can get a good look here that its color seems to be fairly variable. So it starts out with that bright apricot color or maybe a little bit orangey and then it looks like it fades down through the paler colors so that will give you an idea of what it would look like in the garden the other thing is you can go here to member ratings and this one here shows where people who have voted this to be amongst their favorites placed their votes on its best characteristics so for instance they say it's quite vigorous that's got the highest score of all of its ratings it has got a great bloom color form fragrance doesn't score quite so well on shade tolerance. So again, if that was one of your prime considerations, that would be uh, a hint that it's not going to do so well for disease, for shade tolerance. Let's see a couple more. Oops. We'll go with Laura Ford. Also a climber, but it's a miniature climber. That might be important to know. Miniature in this case meaning that the flowers are quite small in comparison to regular or other roses. Uh, still grows to about 12 feet. And let's see what it looks like. Go over to the Photos tab here. And quite a good yellow. And I'm going to scroll through to the next screens until I see what I'm looking for, which is it actually has tints of pink on it as well. So again that's going to be something you would want to know if you're considering growing this rose sort of a pink tinge sort of that peace look to it i'll show you one final rose here before i close up this video and when i was looking for a rose to cover my new arbor which i built in the backyard and you can see a video on that one on my page i eventually chose don juan Don Juan is not a new rose, it's 1958, but when I wanted a climber, what I eventually decided was I really like that look there. And it also, it's dark red with a strong fragrance, grows 12 to 14 feet, which is pretty much exactly the size of my, of my new arbor. And it's hardy in my climate, has 104 favorite votes. So, as I say, this is all user-contributed, so this is kind of, I would call it high on the level of trustworthy information. It's not somebody trying to sell you the rose that's telling you, boy, is this a great rose. This is other users who have come along and rated this. And again, you can go to this member ratings tab here to find out how this one did. What was its 
highest quality. And its highest quality in this case looks like it's the bloom color, which doesn't surprise me with that dark red. Um, also, it scores fairly well, only three points behind on its fragrance, which I can attest to in the garden. It's fantastic. You can, get, you can dig down into member comments on the rows, uh, the references that they've compiled from books and, and annuals and so on about the rose. And so that is fantastic. I'm only going to show you one other thing about this site here is all along here on the left hand side, it has information that they've compiled from other sources. Again, all, all here, they talk about uh, member favorites, for instance, and that's a nice spot to look at because what it does is it kind of makes a list from top to bottom of all of the favorite roses that they've talked about. This one here rates the highest at 369 favorite votes. And which rose is that? Well, it's Maiden's Blush. It's just that Maiden's Blush has all these other names too, which is a little confusing, but that's what we do in roses. Um, number three is Abraham Darby, which shows up quite a lot in the uh, exhibition circuit and so on down. So it just rates all the roses, uh, almost like uh, movies they would rate on Rotten Tomatoes, where it you know, sort of goes with popularity as well. Um, but it's actually a pretty good place to start because it gives you an idea of what people's favorite roses are of all times. That will end my video here. And thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below my video.